This is the OTB Network. Hello and welcome to this Post Breeders Cup edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. Of course, it's been a great weekend of racing action. We're going to begin things not in Kentucky, but in New York. We're going to head back to Friday in a pair of juvenile grade threes that were postponed from the previous week. We're going to begin with the Tempted. One mile for two-year-old fillies. Let's join the Tempted in progress. As change is going to come, takes the field to the halfway mark in 46 and one fifth seconds. So the pace is a good one here. And now they're coming after that lead. Four wide successful outlook makes a run for the lead. Five star daydream and spectacular Malibu. Change is gonna come, has been relegated now to fourth. It's still a long way back to tell it as it is. Coming to the top of the stretch now. At the rail, Spectacular Malibu on the outside, Successful Outlook. Five-star daydream between them. Top of the stretch, and it is Successful Outlook in front. Successful Outlook now in front by a half a length. Spectacular Malibu really game, but still a half length behind in second, followed by Five-star daydream third. Into the final 100 yards. Successful Outlook, Joe Bravo working on her all the way, and she will do it and wins the tempted by length. Successful Outlook is the winner. Spectacular Malibu second and Five Star Daydream hung on for third. Successful Outlook runs her record to two for two with a length and a half victory. Just behind horses in the early going made a sweeping move four wide to pick up the win over Spectacular Malibu with the favored Five Star Daydream back in the third spot. Successful Outlook is a chestnut two-year-old filly, a daughter of Orientate from Catch a Glimpse by Gulch, bred in Kentucky by Foxfield and owned by Gainesway Stable, trained by Scott Blasey and ridden to victory by Joe Bravo. Successful Outlook covers the mile and the tempted in one minute 37 and one. We're going to head right back to the Big A and Friday's co-featured grade three Nashua, two-year-old Colts and Geldings this time going a mile. Let's join the Nashua in progress. In the meantime, Day Pass has drilled a half mile in 45 and 3 fifth seconds and is still in control as they round the far turn. Adore the gold, trying to mount a bid. A length behind with three furlongs to go. At the rail, Exchanger comes on through. And Sightseeing is now fourth. Fourth and still closing ground. But Day Pass is still the leader as the field turns for home. Day Pass comes off the turn in control by two. Exchanger, Adore the gold. Sightseeing, Pink Viper, and Cowtown Cat. One furlong to go. And it is still Day Pass. Day Pass in front. A tap or two from the whip. And Day Pass is now clear by four. Day Pass with a good looking front running score to win the Nashua emphatically. Sightseeing was second. Exchanger was third. And Pink Viper was fourth. Day Pass also going to two for two with this stakes victory, this time under Fernando O'Hara by a four and a quarter length margin as the favorite after a stumbling start. Day Pass got right into the race and had plenty left to hold off sightseeing who rallied well from off the pace with Exchanger at 15 to one back in the third spot. The winner Day Pass also two for two, a $725,000 purchase earlier this year is a grown son of five star day from authorized staff by relaunch. Bred in Kentucky by Silver Oaks Farm and owned by Darley Stable, trained by Kieran McLaughlin and ridden to victory by Fernando Hara. Day Pass covers the mile at the Big A in 1 minute 36 flat. We're going to head into the Saturday card at Aqueduct, beginning with the turn back the alarm for older fillies and mares at nine furlongs. Let's head to Aqueduct and the turn back the alarm. And they're off. As Pleasant Chimes races to the lead, trying to clear Sweet Symphony. Pleasant Chimes indeed clears the field, but on the outside, here's teammate to run with her early. Dina's on the outside third, and Sweet Symphony comes out fourth. And then it's Miss Shop at the back of the pack. The trailer is Marimba Rhythm. Around the first turn, and teammate has taken over the lead. Dina now moves to second on the outside. Pleasant Chimes is now third at the rail. Two lengths back, and Sweet Symphony settles into an easy beat, running along in fourth. And then it's Marimba Rhythm on hold on the inside 
inside fifth the trailer is Miss Shop behind a very easy pace here 25 and 2 was that opening quarter so the pace is just a crawl for teammate the leader mild pressure from Sweet Symphony now who's coming up after on the outside now running in second and then Dina and at the inside Pleasant Chimes at the back of the slow pace marimba rhythm and Miss Shop the half was 50 and 1 fifth seconds so the field approaching the far turn now. Teammate, Sweet Symphony now to the attack. Dina three wide into the far turn. Just in behind Marimba Rhythm, down toward the inside, Pleasant Chimes. And Miss Shop now threads her way through in between horses. As they round the far turn, there's three furlongs to go. Three quarters up in 13 and four. They're approaching the top of the stretch. Dina and teammate now going head to head for the lead. Miss Shop now moves to third as the field turns for home. On the far outside, Marimba Rhythm. And at the rail is Pleasant Chimes. The trailer is now Sweet Symphony. They're coming into the final furlong. Here's Marimba Rhythm now to challenge Dina for that lead. And Miss Shop is coming on through now. Down to the final 16th. And Miss Shop comes on through to get the lead and win the turn back the alarm. It is Miss Shop by a length and a half at the finish. And it was very close for a second there between Dina and Marimba Rhythm. Miss Shop, the other filly from Jerkins. This one at nine to one, picking up the win over Jerkins' uh, sons, Dina, with Marimba Rhythm back in the third spot as the other filly teammate. The odds-on choice from the Jerkins operation showed good speed and backed up to finish fourth. Miss Shop coming out of the, the cotillion and the ruffian picks up the victory by a length and a half. She is a daughter of deputy minister from shopping by private account, bred in Florida by Hobo Farm and owned by the breeder, trained by Alan Jerkins, and ridden to victory by Raul Rojas. Miss Shop covers the mile and an eighth at the Big A in 150 and four. Right back to Aqueduct now and older sprinters in the sport page. This is a grade $350,000. Let's head back to the Big A and the sport page. And they're off. Oh, and a bad stumble there at the break for Blazing Pursuit, who has thrown Jose Lescano to the track. The riderless horse here is Blazing Pursuit. The field moves up the backstretch with Afrashad now up for the lead over Kazoo. Afrashad in front, Kazoo pressing on the outside. Bishop Courthill is third, and Pete Kearney is fourth. Fourth by a wide margin. It's ten lengths back to Silver Wagon, who is followed by Sir Greeley. And happy to report that Jose Lascano just got up and he's walking away on his own power. So the field rounds the far turn now, and it's off Rashad. Off Rashad driving on that lead, pressed hard by Kazoo. Off Rashad through a quarter in 22 and 1, a half and a sizzling 44 and 1 fifth seconds. Off Rashad with a dazzling display of speed here today. Kazoo's in an all out drive, and Silver Wagon well behind earlier, and he is storming up on the outside. So Off Rashad bracing for Silver Wagon as they come down the mid stretch, and Silver Wagon has overpowered Off Rashad. And Silver Wagon is opening up by three, now by four, leaving Off Rashad and Sir Greeley in his wake. They're coming down to the finish, and it's going to be Silver Wagon who scores the cycle. A five-length win. Sir Greeley got up for second. Off Rashad was third. The final time for seven furlongs here, 121 and two. A nice off-the-pace move by Silver Wagon to get his first stakes victory in a long, long time, winning off by five and a half easy lengths under Joe Bravo at three and a half to one over the favored uh, the two favorites in this race, Sir Greeley and Afrashad, who looked like he could be a winner at the top of the stretch, but he had come under just enough pressure early that he did wrap up fairly well by about the uh, 16th pole. The winner, however, Silver Wagon, a gray or roan five-year-old son of Wagon Limit from So Ritzy by Darn That Alarm. Bred in Florida by Mrs. Leverett S. Miller and owned by the Four Roses Thoroughbreds, trained by Richard Dutrow and ridden to victory by Joe Bravo. Silver Wagon covers the seven furlongs at the Big A in 121 and two. We're going to head on to the Aqueduct Turf Course now in the Long Island Handicap at a mile and a half for fillies and mares. Let's join the Long Island in progress. As they move into the clubhouse turn after a half mile, 50 and three-fifths seconds. 
around the clubhouse turn, and it is still Isabel away, the leader. Still very sharp is Cologne, and Cologne is now edging up right to get on even terms with Isabel away. In the meantime, Hermance sitting chilly third, followed by Safari Queen in the clear fourth. Mapenzi is fifth and on the outside. Reform Act still lingering at the back of the pack, six lengths from the leaders, followed by Royal Highness, and then waited out has been steered to the outside for clear running. Three quarters in 16 flat, and now there's a half mile remaining. Working harder to hold that lead, Isabel away. The rail is opened up for Hermance, and Hermance now takes the lead with a flourish into the far turn. It is Hermance in front, but now it's Safari Queen to the attack, and Reform Act is now running in third, and Royal Highness comes through on the inside fourth. A riderless horse there waited out, waited out, has unseated the rider, and now the field is turning for home. Safari Queen powers up and overhauls her mints. On the outside, Reform Act, one furlong to catch Safari Queen, whose lead is three, two and a half lengths, and Royal Highness coming with an explosive rally late on the outside, but time is running out. Safari Queen still holding. Royal Highness is surging to her. Here's the wire, and Safari Queen wins by a long neck over Royal Highness, Reform Act, and Mackenzie. Safari Queen. Unfortunately, this was to be the big victory on the card on the day, rather, for Todd Pletcher, who went 17 going in the stake. Here gets the win at five and a half to one under Chris DiCarlo. A very nice off the pace ride by Chris DiCarlo, patiently riding this mile and a half marathon. Royal Highness making a big bid to finish second. You may remember her as the horse that had finished third in the Turf Classic behind English Channel. Reform Act finishing in the third spot. The winner, Safari Queen, is a chestnut filly, a daughter of Lode from Safari Girl by Sonus, bred in, in Argentina by the Santa Maria de Araras and is owned now by Arundel Farm, trained by Todd Pletcher and ridden to victory by Chris DiCarlo. Safari Queen covers the mile and a half on the Aqueduct Turf Course in 2 minutes 30 and 4. We're going to head back to the main track now in the first flight handicap, a grade two, seven furlongs for fillies and mares. Let's head back down to Aqueduct on the first flight. They're off. Great intentions right to the lead with no time to quit down toward the inside on the outside. Win McCool, a little headstrong up the back stretch. Great intentions, Win McCool right alongside, but hard held. Joe Bravo trying to settle down, Win McCool, who's right at the neck of great intentions. Justin behind them, no time to quit, runs in third. Splendid Blended is fourth and in between horses. Grecian Lover on the outside, fifth by two. Carmandia and Swap Flipperoo trail the field. Swap Flipperoo now, already about 10 lengths from the leader. And the leader is great intentions as they race past the half mile pole. 22 and four, the opening quarter for great intentions. Win McCool moving right with her, second by three. Splendid blended third, Grecian Lover fourth. Carmandia now advancing in the fifth on the outside. No time to quit. And another four back to Swap Flipper, who's still well behind. They're coming toward the top of the stretch. Great intentions, Win McCool. They're still one two with Splendid Blended just in behind them as the field turns for home. Great intentions and Win McCool. They're still going at each other as they come down to that last furlong. Win McCool roused now by Joe Bravo. Great intentions battles on. And here's Carmandia closing. Carmandia closing and up to get the lead. At the 16th pole, it is Carmandia. Win McCool, swap flipperoo. Too late, not enough for Carmandia. The three-length winner, very close for second, Win McCool or Swap Flipper Boo. Carmandia, very impressive in victory was Carmandia, who had won a non-winners of three last time out. Here sweeps to a three and a quarter length win at almost 10 to one over Win McCool at seven to one. She had her nose on the line in front of Swap Flipper Boo as the choices in here. Uh, Co-favorite at just under two to one, resplendent, blended, and great intentions. Uh, both of them were involved from the start, and neither one of them around at the end. They finished sixth and seventh in this seven-horse field. The winner, Carmandia, is a chestnut filly, a daughter of Wild Rush from Her Secret by Mining. Bred in Kentucky by the Buckram Oak Farm and owned by Four Roses Thoroughbreds, trained by Richard Dutrow and ridden to victory by Chris DiCarlo, Carmandia covers the seven furlongs at the Big A and won 22 and four. We're going to head right back to Aqueduct now in the running of the Knickerbocker Handicap for older horses on the grass. Let's head back down to the Big A and the Knickerbocker. And they're off. 
Giant Wrecker breaks on top. We'll take the field over onto the main course. It's Giant Wrecker in front. Bastille on the outside, Fishy Advice, and a little bit tight at the rail is Fishy Advice. So by the first time, Giant Wrecker clears, Fishy Advice on the inside, Bastille alongside that one. They're followed by Proud Man who runs along in fourth. Kerm fifth on the outside, Tiganello is sixth, Drum Major is seventh. Woodlander is allowed to run near run to the back of the pack in the early going here, followed by is Lero Noir, and the early trailer is Planets Alive. So around the clubhouse turn, and it's Fishy Advice now who's up to take over. Fishy Advice takes charge. On the outside, Bastille moves to second. The early leader, Giant Wrecker, is now back to third. A break of three, Proud Man races fourth. Followed by Kerm, who's now fifth on the outside. Tiganello is rating sixth, about eight lengths from the lead now. Then Drum Rager, Isler Noir, Woodlander, and Planets Align. They're a half mile from home. The half went in 48 and two fifth seconds. And it's Fishy Advice in control as they race into the far turn. Bastille is asked to pick it up. He's a length behind in second. Giant Wrecker, third. Proud Man has moved in within striking range, fourth, about three and a half from the front now. Tiganello is allowed more run now. It comes through an opening down toward the inside. On the outside, it's Drum Major, and they hit the top of the stretch. Fishy advice, the leader, the leader by two, Bastille full up, and on the rail, here comes Giant Wrecker, just in behind him, is Lara Nawaz coming on through, on the outside, Drum Major kicking in late, now they're coming down to the final 16th, Fishy advice, Drum Major coming at him, 50 yards from home, here's Drum Major, Fishy advice, and Drum Major nailed him, Drum Major got it in the last stride, Fishy advice was second, close for third, between Giant Wrecker and is Lara Nawaz. Drum Major and Joe Bravo just getting there to run down fishy advice by a head. Giant Wrecker, the uh, early pace setter who settled back behind horses, attempted to make a re-rally under Richie Migliori, could do no better than third. The winner, Drum Major, is a dark bay or brown colt, the son of Dinah former from Endless Parade by Williamstown. Bred by Roger W. Clark in Kentucky and owned by Dogwood Stable, trained by George Weaver and ridden to victory by Joe Bravo. Drum Major completes the mile and an eighth on the Aqueduct Turf in 150 and two. We're going to pause now for a brief message. When we return, we'll be finishing up the weekend's card at the Big A and heading to Churchill Downs. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now with the New York Stallion Series from Sunday at Aqueduct. We'll begin with the Great White Way Division, $100,000 for Colts and Geldings, sired by New York Stallions. Going to go six furlongs. Let's head down to the Big A and the Great White Way Division of the New York Stallion Series. And they're off Baxter and Land of Opportunity, breaking quickly. And it's Land of Opportunity who's out for that lead. Coming through on his inside, Son of Sabato. And Son of Sabato is now the leader. Land of Opportunity runs in second. Huge City is third. Four off the rail, Baxter. Five off the rail, good card. Down on the fence, it's Smash 'em Semi. The trailer is the Zipster. The leader is Son of Sabato, who ripped through a quarter and 21 and four. 
Son of Sabato out there now by almost two, and he's flying. Land of Opportunity in all out pursuit, running second. On the inside, Smash him Semi. On the outside, it's Good Card. Coming on through between horses now, Baxter, as they come to the top of the stretch. Son of Sabato rolls into the stretch with a two length lead. Ran a half and 45 seconds flat. Land of Opportunity. Baxter's now third on the outside. Son of Sabato, A. Barcoa trying to get one more furlong from him. Here's Land of Opportunity, who's now in front. Land of Opportunity in front. Son of Sabato fights on. On the outside, Baxter third. Down to the finish. Land of Opportunity. Baxter with the final surge to win. Baxter gets it in the last stride. Land of Opportunity, second in that photo. Son of Sabato was third. Baxter and Kent DeSormo picking up the victory by a neck. They were favored in this field. The desperate uh, neck victory over Land of Opportunity, the longest shot on the board at 23 to 1 with Son of Sabato back in the third spot after setting the early pace. The winner, Baxter, is a two-year-old Dark Bay or Brown son of American Chance from Meg's Habit by Crafty Prospector. Bred by Margaret N. Carruthers in New York and owned by Margaret Carruthers and Patricia Parker. Trained by John Hurtler and ridden to victory by Kent Sormo. Baxter covers the six furlongs at the Big A in 110 and 4. Next up, we're going to move to the turf and take a look at the perfect dark division of the New York Stallion Series. Phillies and mares at a mile and a sixteenth. Let's join the perfect dark division in progress. 47 and 1 was that half mile over the good going here. So the pace is strong enough. And Tamburino still leads. There goes Baby Gray, who makes a move for the lead on the outside as they move into the far turn. And Baby Gray overhauls the front runners. There's nothing left for Tamburino. Baby Gray in front. Here comes Fairy Tale Story with a bold rush. Now up into second. Higher incentive, charging hard. Now into third. And then it's Artistic Express, who's fourth toward the inside. Intergalactics in between horses, along with Peg's Prayer and Follow My Dream. Top of the stretch, Baby Gray, higher incentive, gaining with every stride. One furlong to go, and Artistic Express tries to come through on the inside of Baby Gray. Baby Gray, higher incentive. Those two nip and tuck just to their inside. Artistic Express in tight, coming down to the line. Baby Gray so determined. Artistic Express comes up on her inside, and Artistic Express got her nose on the line first with a game run. Baby Gray right there in that photo, and then close for third, higher incentive in Intergalactic. Artistic Express, very impressive in victory, down inside through the running of the stretch, looked mid-stretch like Baby Gray was going to get the victory, but a persevering ride by Cornelio Velasquez and a game effort by this filly get them a neck victory over Baby Gray with higher incentive, making a big sweeping move, looking like a winning move in the, at that at the top of the stretch, but having to settle for third in a very close three-horse finish. The winner, Artistic Express, is a chestnut filly, a daughter of Western Expression from Dancing Mary Lee by Nuriev. Bred here in New York by Chester and Mary Broman, owned by the Bromans and trained by Ramon Hernandez, ridden to victory by Cornelio Velasquez, Artistic Express covers the mile in the 16th on the aqueduct turf in 144 and 4. We're going to head back to the main track now and the Fifth Avenue division of the Stallion Series for two-year-old fillies going six. Let's head back to the Big A and the Fifth Avenue division. And they're off. A bobble at the break there for Nordberg. And up the back stretch. On the far outside, it's Crosstown Traffic, who will go head-to-head -head with all fired up. Those two really going at it in the first furlong here. And it is Crosstown Traffic who shakes loose to a two-length lead now. All fired up, runs in second, followed by Twistway, who's now third, Precious two, fourth on the outside. Sweet Victory losing ground in fifth. Nordberg down toward the inside, and Lauren Tardice trails the field. Around the far turn, there may be something amiss there with the Precious two. Perhaps it's an equipment problem gone very wide. In the meantime, it is Crosstown Traffic, the leader, all fired up, pressing hard, and definitely something amiss with Precious two very wide. Here's Twist Away, who rallies just outside the quarter pole, and the field turns for home. All fired up, cross town traffic, head to head for the lead. Twist Away, Lauren Tideice is rallying down the center of the racetrack. And Nordberg comes on late fifth, one furlong to go now. Here's Lauren Tideice on the far outside. Twist Away's in between horses, all fired up, and it is Lauren Tideice in front. Twist Away and all fired up. 
Lauren Tideice, the winner by a half a length twist away was second. All fired up was third. Lauren Tideice finally getting that elusive stakes victory. She had been so impressive in victory in her maiden uh, win in Saratoga. Had found herself up against some fairly tough company. Here gets into the Stallion Series and picks up a half a length victory over a game twist away who had been an impressive winner last time out and sent off as the favorite as a result. All fired up. Involved from the start. In fact, got to the lead at the top of the stretch. Could, had, could settle for no better than third. The winner, Lauren Tide Ice, is a gray or roan two-year-old filly, a daughter of Intadab from La Muttering by Muttering, bred in New York by Camelia Casby and owned by the breeder, trained by Mark Hennig and ridden a victory by Cornelio Velasquez. Lauren Tide Ice covers the six furlongs on the Big A main track in 111 and 4. We're going to head back to the turf now at Aqueduct, and we're going to take a look at the Cormorant Division of the New York Stallion Series. Mile and a 16th on the turf will join the Cormorant in progress. And they've caught Retribution. Retribution now only leads by an act. The half was 48 and 2 fifths seconds. Retribution, the leader. Red Zipper pressing him hard with three furlongs to go. And then it's the Confidence Man racing third. Papada rallies for third and second out. Here comes Papada, who rolls up to engage Red Zipper as they turn for home. Then Metro Meteor trying to come on through in between horses. Classic pack on the far outside. One furlong to go. Red Zipper, Red Zipper short lead. Papada, Red Zipper in short, and Papada, those two head to head for the lead with Classic Pack now third. They're coming down to the finish, and it's Red Zipper. Red Zipper out gaming Papada down to the line to win it by a half a length. Papada was second, Classic Pack was third, Retribution was fourth. Bit of an upset here is Red Zipper, who'd been so successful in allowance company within the New York bred ranks, and as a son of City Zip, who stood at stud here in New York is eligible for the Stallion Series and uh, here gets the victory at big price over 10 to 1 by three quarters of a length over the game Papa Da who was one of those off the pace horses that you can always count on to make the big move also rallying well was Classic Pack who had been involved from the start in some of his more recent turf starts this time they turned him around and he rallied well to finish third the winner, however, Red Zipper, a chestnut gelded son of City Zip from Lady in Red by Red Attack, was bred here in New York by Nancy Harris and John G. Allen, currently owned by Jeffrey Tucker and trained by John Morrison, ridden to victory by Ibar Coa. Red Zipper covers the mile in the 16th on the Big A turf in 1 minute 43 and 4. We're going to leave New York and head to Kentucky, go back to last Thursday, and their stakes feature the Grade 2 Chaluki, $150,000 mile on the main track. Let's head down to Kentucky, Churchill Downs, and join the Chaluki in progress. Moving towards the fire turn, Mary Delaney, three parts of a length in front. Sangrita turning up the heat. The rail's open for Bejarano, who sends Indian Flair on through along the inside. Trippy Street under pressure in fourth joint effort gets a crack of the whip in fifth. Lady Pegasus five off the pace. Wild Fit set down for the drive now. Behind that comes Humorous Gal and Golden Locket is at the back of the top of the lane. They turn for home. And the stretch drive, Sangrita short lead. Indian Flair leans on her from the inside. Trippy Street re rallies third. Wild Fit still inching up along the inside. Then joint effort in Lady Pegasus. Final furlong Sangrita and Edgar Prado kicking away past the 16th pole. Sangrita opens up by two. A late charge from joint effort. Sangrita's got it one. Sangrita wins the Chaluki by two. Joint effort second. Indian Flair. Then Wild Fit. Sangrita picking up a nice victory here by two lengths on or near the pace every step of the way, getting the win over joint effort who made her usual bid from off the pace as the favorite. Indian Flair coming off a nice allowance victory at Keeneland last time out had to settle for third. The winner, Sangrita, is a Bay filly, a daughter of Mr. Greeley from Alvere by Seattle Slough, a half-sister to uh, top older horse, Awfully Wild. You may remember him from a couple of years ago. Bred in Kentucky by Dorothy A. Matz and owned by the breeder, trained by her husband, Michael Matz, and ridden to victory by Edgar Prado. Sangrita covers the one mile at Churchill in 136 and 4. We'll head right back to Churchill Downs now and the River City Handicap, $150,000 mile and an eighth on the turf. We'll head back to Friday and join the River City in progress.
Ballas continuing up the backside. Chief Export, three parts of a length in front. Ballas is tugging hard against Garrett Gomez and increasing that pressure from second now. Bales right there inching up a closer third. And Courtnall down at the hedge racing fourth and bottled up at the moment. Erroneous ID is three wide. Art Master still four and a half lengths off the pace. Silver whistles up the inside in heavy traffic. And victory design in Lore Admiral at the back of the pack around the turn of the top of the lane. Ballas cut loose by Gomez and accelerates clear at the quarter pole. Ballast opening up by three now on Chief Export. The whip comes out on Bayo on the outside. Erroneous ID driving. Courtnall on the inside. Silver whistle can't screw a fight a seam. Down to the final furlong. It's Ballast in front of length and a half. Bayo on the outside. Closing the gap stride by stride. Ballast digs in from Bayo. Bayo to the front late. And Bayo gets up to win the River City handicap. Going away. Tight for the place. Lord Admiral maybe just nipping out Ballast for the place. Another photo for fourth and fifth. By you, a big surprise. One of the uh, upsets on the weekend down at Churchill. Getting the win at 23 and a half to one. The second longest choice on the board making his American debut and obviously taking quite nicely to the racing surface. This is a uh, gelded son of Red Ransom who had been running in the handicap division in Europe. And that is a division that is probably more on par with our allowance conditions here uh, as opposed to uh, list or listed stakes as opposed to group and graded company. Bayeux picks up the win at the expense of Lord Admiral and Ballast, who is coming off a tremendous effort down at Keeneland on their turf course. The winner, Bayeux, is a gelded bay son of Red Ransom from Elizabeth Bay by Mr. Prospector, bred in Kentucky by Darley and owned by Michael Tabor, trained by Gerard Butler and ridden to victory by John Velasquez. Bayeux covers the mile and an eighth on the turf in 148 and three. We're going to stay right at Churchill Downs, head into Breeders' Cup Day, and take a look at the opening race on the card, the Very Subtle. This for Philly and Mare Sprinters. Let's head down to Churchill and the Very Subtle. In the gate. Off and running in the very subtle, true and true from the far outside. High Heritage flashing early speed takes a short lead now. Warner's up into second, Prospect of St. Racing third, Hot Storms in fourth. True and true on the far outside, Racing fifth, Maryfield up the inside comes on. Fire Pursuit just four off the pace and gaining along the inside. Three further back to Maggie Slew. Dixie Dreamers second last by two in the gray. Annika Lass is at the back of the pack. Down to the half mile pole they go. Maryfield and Pat Valenzuela, three parts of a length in front the quarter was clipped off in 21 and 3. But the outside high heritage turning up the heat now from second with Hot Storm gaining up three wide from third now. Fiery Pursuit Prospective State moving up in traffic. True and True just three off the pace and rolling up five wide. Then Mourner next by three to Maggie Slew. Five back to Anna Kalas and Dixie Dreamer off the turn and a stretch drive. Maryfield cuts the corner. A length in front whip comes out on high heritage now. Here comes True and True on the outside and Hot Storm Final furlong, Maryfield. P Val pulls out the stick. Length and a half in front. True and true on the far side. Maryfield, true and true. Hot storm. Maryfield still there holding on. Maryfield held them all up to hang on and win the Emirates Airline. Very subtle. Mourner up for second. Hot storm was third in 109 and 3. Maryfield putting uh, P. Val on the map on the beginning part of the card. She didn't break that alertly, but she got right into the race in the early going, took the rail, and that was the place to be. Going to coast along that inside rail to win by a length and a quarter over Mourner, who rallied nicely from off the pace. Hot storm made a bit of a middle move to finish in the third spot. The winner, Maryfield, is a, ch is a bay mare, a daughter of elusive quality from Sly Made by Desert Wine. Bred by Mike Carroll and John C. Harvey in Ontario. Owned by Empire Stables et al. and trained by Doug O'Neill and ridden to victory by Pat Valenzuela. Maryfield covers the six furlongs at Churchill in 109 and 3. We'll head right back to Churchill Downs and the running of the ACAC. -AC. This is a grade three, $200,000 for older horses. Let's head back down to Churchill in the ACAC. -AC. Off and running in the ACAC. -AC. Southern Africa broke like a shot and goes to the front early. It's no joke. Flashing speed now takes the lead. Going wild up the inside. Enjoying that one second straight line. Kimoy racing third. Andromeda's hero gaining on the outside with Magna graduate. Now Irene's Mon is down along the inside. Level playing field moves up in heavy traffic. Greeley's Galaxy just three lengths off the pace. Cause to believe on the far side. Southern Africa now five lengths off him. Poppy Chulo next in traffic. A couple back to Irene's Mon. Behind that comes Andromeda's hero.
Awesome twist at the back. The quarter fairly slow. 23 and 1 up the backside. They continue going wild along the inside. Pokes ahead in front of level playing field in second. It's no joke. Is stalking three wide racing in third. Straight in line. Three and a half off from fourth. Magna graduate poised and gaining four deep now. Irene's Mod up the inside. Followed up by Poppy Chulo moving through horses now. Greeley's Galaxy shaken up early. A link to half farther back. The Southern Africa who's up the inside now. Then Andromeda's hero. An awesome twist. Half down the straight, they picked it up, 45 and 3, around the turn to the top of the stretch they come, it's no joke, 3 wide, to take a short lead from level playing field, going wild, shaking up along the inside, next by 2, Magna Graduate try to gear it up, and here comes Irene's Mon looking to cause the upset, now to the final furlong, it's no joke, shaken up by Robbie Alvarado, it's no joke by a length and a half, Irene's Mon and Julian La Peru charging on the outside, it's no joke, Irene's Mon trying to close the gap, it's no joke, Irene's Mon. It's no joke. Holds on to win the act act by an act to Irene's Mon. Level playing field in Poppy Chulo was four. It's no joke. One of the solid campaigners on the Midwest circuit getting the victory here under Robbie Alvarado by a neck with a front running effort. He was actually passed in the early going, settled back behind a couple of horses early, uh, including going wild, but did end up recapturing the lead, winning by a neck over Irene's Mon with level playing field back in the third spot. The winner, It's No Joke, is a dark Bayer Brown colt, a son of distorted humor from its personal by, pers by personal flag. Bred in Kentucky by Windstar Limited and owned by Stan Fulton, trained by Rebecca Maker and ridden to victory by Robbie Alvarado. It's No Joke runs the mile at Churchill in 1 minute 34 and 3. We're going to pause for one more brief break, and when we return, we'll have a wrap-up of this year's running at the Breeders' Cup races. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now, of course, with the races of the Breeders' Cup. Beginning with the Breeders' Cup, Juvenile Phillies, $2 million, grade one, a mile and a sixteenth. Let's head to Kentucky now and the call of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. And away they go. From the inside gate, Dreaming of Anna got a beautiful start and kicks off for the lead. Here comes Appealing Zofi on the outside, and between those two we have Cotton Blossom, the pace not particularly fast early on. We come back to Octave getting a good position, right in behind the leading group, Cotton Blossom on the outside of her. Lily Carson has to go about four wide. She's included in the red colours in the vanguard as well. Now, here's Cash included, racing in seventh in the white colours, gives them four length start. Quick Little Miss is up a little closer today in the pink colours. Alongside of that comes Valet Beauty, and down at the rail we have Sutra in the blue colours, who's now seven lengths off the leaders. Add Rhythm at Her Majesty racing towards the rear. On the outside of that comes Gator Eyes, and Satulagi is the trailer, giving them ten length start. They make their way to the half mile pole now and Dreaming of Anna has got a dream run out here. She's not being pressured on the lead. She has it by a length now. There goes She's included up to put some pressure on her appealing Zofi in the white on the outside. Tucked in at the rail is Octave. Now Octave going to have to find some room. She's in with a big shot in the blue collars though. Cotton Blossom racing back in fifth. Cash included. Not doing enough. She's eight off them. 
They come into the top of the lane now, and Dreaming of Anna's asked to kick for home, and she does so willingly, but Octave in the blue colours down at the rail is looming the danger. Appealing Zophie in the white cap, hanging tough, and Cotton Blossom on the grandstand side. Four of them line up as they pass the 300. Now it's Dreaming of Anna and Octave, but Octave is catching her stride for stride down the centre. Dreaming of Anna digs deep. She calls on all her class. Octave can't get to her, and Dreaming of Anna and Renee Douglas have taken Taking the Breeders' Cup Juvenile a length and three quarters, Octave a game second, Cotton Blossom finished up third, and appealing Zophie was four. Dreaming of Anna getting the rail and getting the lead and never looking back, winning by a length and a half under Renee Douglas over Octave, who made a noble bid into the second spot with Cotton Blossom. A little bit on the wide side, and that was not the place to be on this racetrack, settling for third. The winner dreaming of Anna coming in out of two tries on the turf after having broken her maiden on the dirt at four and a half furlongs, obviously having no trouble stretching out. It would have been tough to think of her getting the lead early from Lily Carson and appealing Zophie. Lily Carson didn't break all that well and appealing Zophie was taken back by Sean Bridgmahan and dreaming of Anna was home free under very little pressure. Dreaming of Anna is a chestnut filly, a two-year-old daughter of Rahi from Just Enough Heart by Broad Brush. Bred in Kentucky by Frank C. Calabrese and owned by the breeder, trained by Wayne Catalano and ridden to victory by Renee Douglas, Dreaming of Anna. Covers the mile and a 16th in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies in 143 and 4. Next up, of course, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. This is the two-year-old Colts and Geldings going for $2 million, a mile and a 16th. Let's head back to Kentucky in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. For Denman, way they go. Circular Key took a little bump shortly after the start and is going to drop back last. Stormello is going to go on to set the early pace. Scat Daddy showing early speed, but he too was in tight and had a drop back. There's Principal Secret and Pegasus Wind on the outside. They sprinting early on. Just in behind the leaders now, we have got the last lap, and then there's Mob Magic. Scat Daddy is down at the rail, three and a half off the leaders. King of the Roxies up alongside of him. CP West is racing back in the eighth position, giving them seven length start. Up alongside of those two, we have Great Hunter now is towards the rear. Then we come back to Teufelsberg, being followed then by Skip Code, who's racing back fourth last. A long way back here to Street Sense, UD Getter, and Circular Key is last, and Circular Key's got to be 20 lengths off these leaders. They go to the half mile and Principal Secret in the red colours takes the advantage, but they've been going some pace up here. Stormello's already ridden along down at the rail. Pegasus wind. Now there goes Scat Daddy on the outside. He's hooked four wide, but Scat Daddy goes to take them on. CP West is running on behind that. And let's see Circular Key starting his run now. He's a good 12 off them. Circular Key making good ground if he can find a way through and then Street Sense. At the top of the lane, Pegasus Wind, Scat Daddy breathes down his neck on the outside. On alongside of those two now, here comes Great Hunter. And Great Hunter now just goes right on by them. Circular Key from last on the grandstand side. Homeward bound Circular Key coming on gamely on the centre of the track. But it's not going to get to Street Sense, who's gone well clear as they come for home now. And it's going to be Street Sense to win this one at distant. Street Sense could not have been more impressive. He rubs. It'll be Circular Key second. Great Hunter finishes third. And Scat Daddy was four. Street Sense, very impressive. Once again, riding that rails. Cal Burrell, in fact, looking like he must have come back with white paint on the left boot, winning off by 10 impressive lengths at 15 to 1. The top three finishers from the Lanes End Breeders Futurity at Keeneland on the Poly Track returning to run in the same, different order, but in those same positions with Street Sense and Grade Hunter swapping positions here. A Street Sense clearly with the best part of the racetrack, riding the rails from off the pace to win each easily over Circular Key and Great Hunter. The winner, Street Sense, is a Dark Bayer Brown son of Street Cry from Bedazzled by Dixieland Band, bred in Kentucky by James Taffel, owned by the breeder, trained by Carl Nafsker, and ridden to victory by Calvin Burrell. Street Sense covers the mile and a 16th at Churchill Downs in 142 and 2. We'll move on to the turf course now in the Breeders' Cup Fillier Mare Turf. The Emirates Airlines Fillier Mare Turf, $2 million, a mile and three eighths on the grass. Let's head back to Churchill and the Fillier Mare Turf. Hill sent on the way in the Emirates Airline Breeders' Cup Fillier Mare. Germant's a little slow to get going. 
Down on the inside, we have Dancing Edie determined to take the early lead and goes on to lead them. Racing up into second comes Phil Maker on the outside, My Typhoon in the red cap now taking that second spot. Wait a while, is very keen in the early stages, been restrained now though, taken back into fourth, just three lengths off the leaders. On the outside, Satwa Queen is going to have to come through in the grandstand side. Here's Frankie de Tori and Ouija Board in the white cap, right in the middle of his track, about six lengths off these leaders. Racing in just behind those two comes Maura Lakana. Up alongside of her, we have Honey Rider and Quiet Royal has been taken back to the back, but only nine lengths would cover them all. Pasta stands first time round, and Kari Nakatani and Dancing Edie in no hurry at all, taking them along as slow as he can now. My Typhoon on the outside is in second. Jamance has taken a stronghold at the rail right there in third. Filmmaker is in the fourth position, only two and a half off them. On the outside, Wait A While is a joint fourth. Here's Ouija board in the white cap down at the rails in the sixth position, four and a half lengths off these leaders. Satwa Queen up alongside of her. Quiet Royal begins to make a bit of progress on the far side. And then we come back to Mora Lakana and Honey Rider. No more than six lengths would cover the entire field now. They make their way to the half-mile pole, and now My Typhoon picks up the pace on the outside of Dancing Edie. Racing in just behind that comes Phil Maker, who's going up between them. Down at the rail, we have Jamance, only two of them. Wait a while is on the outside. Ouija Board is still back in the sixth spot, giving them four-length start now. In behind that, Quiet Royal Satwa Queen. They come into the top of the lane, and My Typhoon kicks for home. Here's Wait a while coming to take her on now. Ouija Board down the ground. And stand side in the white cap, racing in behind that Satwa Queen. They are homeward bound, and here's Ouija Board being so confidently handled by Frankie de Tori, just hand riding her along the inside, coming with a late run as Filmmaker. Ouija Board in full flight for the wire. Filmmaker coming home gamely, Honey Rider. But this is another scintillating effort from the true superstar Ouija Board and Frankie de Tori. They win it by three. Filmmaker will be second. Honey Rider was third, and wait a while. Has to settle for four. Ouija board, yet another very impressive performance by this mare who has been absolutely dominant throughout most of her career. She has rarely put a foot wrong. She's now won this race twice with a second place finish in there as well. And she just looked impressive. Frankie Dettori riding her patiently from off the pace to get the win over Filmmaker, who once again chased this mare home. She has been behind this mare a couple of times. And, and honestly, Filmmaker, a little bit of a hard luck horse running into a real monster here. Honey Rider making a nice bid to finish in the third spot. I really liked Honey Rider a lot. I thought she might be able to get up to the second spot, but she came up just a little bit short after swinging wide into the turn or out of the turn. The winner, Ouija Board, a dark bayer brown five-year-old mare, a daughter of Cape Cross from Selection Board by Welsh Pageant, was bred in Great Britain by the Stanley Estate and Stud Company and is owned by Lord Darby. Trained by Ed Dunlop and ridden to victory by Frankie Dettori, Ouija Board covers the mile and Three eighths on the turf course, labeled firm in 214 and 2. Next up, the TVG Breeders' Cup Sprint. Grade 1 my, or Grade one Sprinters here going the six furlongs. Let's head back down to Churchill and the Breeders' Cup Sprint. All in line. And away they go to a perfect start. Attila's Storm and Kelly's Landing from the two outside gates. Bordenero's coming through on their inside. Pomeroy's right there, fourth. Thor's Echo at the rail, a close up fifth. Alongside of that comes Warfront in the green cap, just three lengths off the leaders. Nightmare Affair is right there as well. Down at the rail, we have Friendly Island, Lewis Michael, Henny Hughes in the gold colors far back today. Henny Hughes, a good eight lengths off these leaders. Then it's Are You Talking To Me and Siren Lure is last early. They run past the half mile pole and board an arrow on the inside of Tiller's Storm between horses. There's Thor's Echo making a nice run now, and Thor's Echo in the red looking strong as he gets the lead with a quarter of a mile to go. Pomeroy in just behind the leaders, then comes Friendly Island. Henny Hughes, something drastically amiss today. Henny Hughes didn't pick his feet up at all, he's far, far back. They come past the 300, and Thor's Echo takes the advantage and kicks on for home. And it's Thor's Echo, board an arrow along the inside. Running a big one here is Attila Storm coming late down the centre is Friendly Island. Nightmare Affair, but it's all Thor's Echo. And it's Thor's Echo in a dominating performance in the sprint. Thor's Echo and Curry Nakatani win it clear. Friendly Island was second, a photo, Bordenero, and Nightmare Affair for third. 
Thor's Echo in from California, picking up only his fourth career victory with this win, but he had been chasing some very good horses out on the West Coast, including Bordenaro, who was well regarded in this field, the four to one second choice in the wagering who did, uh, did finish well uh, to finish fourth, but uh, Thor's Echo had been chasing him up out in Southern California for quite some time, but a nice ride to take the lead, take the rail of Thor's Echo with that one post position in the right part of the racetrack, taking advantage of it and winning by four over Friendly Island, Nightmare Affair and Bordenaro in a three horse photo finish for the underneath spots, but uh, Friendly Island getting his nose down in the second spot, 58 and a half to one, Nightmare Affair disappointed up here in his most recent start in the Forgo rebounds with an off the pace rallying move to third under Edgar Prado. The winner Thor's Echo is a chestnut gelding a son of Swiss yodeler from Helen of Troy by Mr. Integrity. Bred by Fast Lane Farm and Block and Foreman Thoroughbreds in California. Owned by Jamie Royce Racing Stable and Suarez Racing Stable. Trained by Doug O'Neill and ridden to victory by Corey Nakatani. Thor's Echo covers the six furlongs in 108 and four. We're going to head right back to the Breeders' Cup competition, the NetJets Breeders' Cup Mile. One mile on the turf. Let's head back down to Kentucky and the NetJets Breeders' Cup Mile. And away they go in the NetJets Breeders' Cup Mile. Ad Valorum breaks well with silent name from the inside gate, but now Echo of Light is going up alongside of the leaders, and here's Badge of Silver. Badge of Silver kicks on on the grandstand side. Aussie Rules gets a good spot just behind him. Araborn is going nicely in six, five off them. Arafine, the green colors down at the rail, now gives them six length start. The pace a good one up front. Then we come back to Super Frolic, being followed by Librettist, who's a good 10 lengths off the leader, Sleeping Indian. In behind that, now we drop back to Gorella, who's racing towards the rear. In behind her comes Mystique's approval, and still the trailer here is Rob Roy. They head now towards the half mile pole and silent name pulling his way along a length and a half. Badger Silver second, Ad Valorum right there in third. Free thinking between horses. On the outside, Echo of Light keen to go on in the blue colors. Arafar is hooked four wide and Aragorn is hooked five wide as they all line up into the turn. Librettist, meanwhile, gets a beautiful long run along the rail. Just in behind that, now we have Mies approval and let's see, Gorilla is still far back, a good nine off them. Rob Roy's last. They come into the top of the lane. Silent name looking to cause an upset. Badger Silver's right there in second. Echo of Light in the blue colors. Arafar down the grandstand side. Aragorn not quite doing enough. On the extreme outside now, here comes Meeks. Yes, approval with a big run too. Silent name, but it's Mies approval mowing them all down. And Mies approval in a giant upset here. It's Mies approval coming home to win the Breeders' Cup mile on his own. Aragorn will eventually get up for second. It was Badger Silver third and then a four-way photo for that four spot. Miesk's approval. This guy has just really had an amazing seven-year-old season. He began his season this year with a win in the Sunshine Millions over Silver Tree. His, uh, in fact, former stablemate in the Mott operation. It was only his second start for New Connections. He was very, very good that day and has moved from strength to strength throughout the course of this season, winning the Breeders' Cup mile by two and three-quarter lengths from off the pace under Eddie Castro over Aragorn and Badge of Silver. Aragorn rallying from well back off the pace to finish in that second spot. Badge of Silver sitting just off the early pacemaker silent name in his first start since January of this year to finish third in the Breeders' Cup mile. The winner, Miesk's Approval, is a seven-year-old bay son of Miesk's son from Win Approval by With Approval. Bred in Florida by Live Oak Stud and owned by Live Oak Plantation. Trained by Marty Wolfson and ridden to victory by Eddie Castro, Miesk's Approval covers the flat mile at Churchill on the Churchill turf in 134 and 3. We're going to head right back to Breeders' Cup competition and the Emirates Airlines Breeders' Cup distaff. Two million dollars for three and up fillies and mares. Let's head back to Kentucky and the distaff. And away they go in the Emirates Airlines Breeders' Cup distaff. Along the inside, healthy addiction 
Ben broke away well sharp Lisa spun sugars right there too on the grandstand side here comes bushfire to join the leaders and pool landers up there the pace couldn't be much quicker than this round pond tucked in just behind the leaders now here's fleet Indian taken quite far back today fleet Indian got to be a good eight lengths off the leaders happy ticket up alongside of her RCCM praise the gray towards the rear Belito is quite content to bide her time a good ten lengths off these leaders and Pine Island has expected no pace taken back towards the rear and then we have a gap of four lengths further back to Lemons Forever and Hollywood Story. Down the back stretch they go and healthy addiction on a loose rein going about as quick as she could for the distance. On the outside of her we have Pool Land keeping the pressure on. Sharp Lisa is in third and Round Pond down at the rail. Bagdaria is racing in fifth. Spun Sugar is sixth. Six off the leaders. Fleet Indian is up alongside of her in Miss Pack. Bushfire been niggled along on the outside. RCC Ampre, happy ticket. Belito is now nine lengths off the leaders. Hollywood stories far back with Lemons Forever. They're approaching the quarter pole now, and Pool Land goes on with it, taken on by Sharp Lisa, but now you come to come from behind us, Bagdaria. Happy ticket on the outside of that. RCC Empre, Belletto's running on as well. Fleet Indians been eased. Fleet Indian has been eased. Fleet Indian pulled up at the quarter pole. They come for home, Sharp Lisa, happy ticket down the grandstand side, and here's Belletto on the extreme outside, racing Greenlee, but coming to take them on. Down at the rail, Round Pond is going on with it too, and it's Round Pond in front from Happy Ticket. Down the centre of the track, coming with a late run now is Lemons Forever, but it's Round Pond going on to take the distaff. Round Pond and Edgar Prado win it. Here's RCC Ampre late, Happy Ticket third, and Belletto finished up fourth. Round Pond getting the victory here in fairly handy fashion after riding through on the rails under Edgar Prado, winning off by four and a quarter lengths. Asi Siempre did cross the line second and was absolutely busting to run through most of the running of this race, could never find room, was disqualified from second to fourth after interfering with Boleto. And as a result, Happy Ticket and Boleto both move up a spot, Happy Ticket getting the second and Boleto the third spot in the finish, official finish of the Breeders' Cup Distaff. Unfortunately, this race marred by two incidents including Pine Island's tragic breakdown she did suffer a life-ending injury, uh, fracturing a, a bone in a foreleg very, very seriously, and as a result, sadly, was euthanized on the racetrack. Fleet Indian with a little bit better success than that, apparently having ex uh, extensive soft tissue injuries, but nothing that is considered life-threatening. And uh, fin reports after the, uh, the incident and on Monday morning indicate that Fleet Indian uh, was actually doing fairly well and is in okay condition. She has been with drawn from the November sale which she had been entered in but uh, she will uh, she will likely face a full recovery and a long hopefully a very long career as a brood mare the winner round pond is a bay filly a four-year-old daughter of awesome again from gift of dance by trampolino she was bred in Kentucky by Trudy McCaffrey and John Toffin owned by Fox Hill farm and trained by Michael Matz ridden to victory by Edgar Prado round pond covers the mile and an eighth at Churchill in 150 and two. Next up, the John Deere Breeders' Cup Turf, a mile and a half on the grass for $3 million. Let's head back to Kentucky in the John Deere Breeders' Cup Turf. Neil sent on their mile and a half journey in the John Deere Breeders' Cup Turf. Rush Bay is fast into stride. I see Intel Atlantic along the inside and Scorpion up between those two. A very solid pace early. Kasik is coming through one from the rail and go deputy down at the rail. Here's Hurricane Run going up to race a joint fourth four lengths off the leaders. English Channel carried a little wide into the turn. Then we drop back to TH Approval, who's dropped a good 11 lengths off that leader. Red Rocks racing back towards the rear. In behind that, we have Better Talk now and the long shot Silverfoot is last early. Come into the top of the stretch first time round, and as expected, I see Atlantic setting a very hot early pace. I see Atlantic has gone clear by four. Scorpion nicely positioned along the inside of Rush Bay. Down the center comes English Channel, and tucked in just behind those two is Kasik. Go Deputy in the white cap down at the rail, and Hurricane Run moving very comfortably just behind the leading group. He's about seven lengths off the leader. Then a big gap of five back to TH Approval. Red Rocks in behind that. They followed by Better Talk now, and Silverfoot continues to trail. Just about half the journey covered now, and I see Atlantic still doing his job out here as he shows the way. He's clear by three, ensured a good pace throughout. Scorpion down at the rail up alongside Rush Bay. 
English Channel now moving up closer in the four spot. Cacique between horses and Go Deputy down at the rail. They're taking closer order now. Only four lengths separates those six. Then it's another two and a half back to Hurricane Run racing on his own. TH Approval has been asked to pick it up early with Red Rocks outside of him. They are seven lengths off these leaders. And then we come back to Better Talk now and Silverfoot continues to trail. A half mile left to run now. I see Atlantic trying to hang tough on the lead, but now there goes Rush Bay to take over, and I see Atlantic's done his job now. English Channel is right there in third, Scorpion at the rail. There goes Kasik on the outside now. Kasik goes to tackle him. TH Approval is in behind that. Now Hurricane Run has suddenly been ridden along and not responding. Hurricane Run's dropping out of it. In behind that comes Better Talk now. They are homeward bound, and it's Rush Bay going on for home. Down the east centre of the track, here comes English Channel with a big run. Scorpion going through down at the rail. Red Rocks on the grandstand side, coming home gamely. And even better talk now, joining them on the outside. But now striking the front is Red Rocks. Red Rocks the leader, better talk now, coming at him. Red Rocks going on from better talk now. But it's Red Rocks and Frankie Dutari to win the turf. Second will be better talk now. English Channel finished up third and Rush Bay weakened to four. Red Rocks over from Europe. Uh, the European contingent did not have much success in the Breeders' Cup mile, but much better here as Red Rocks coming out of a couple of very nice performances where he chased home major Group 1 company in Europe, settling for uh, a uh, perhaps a little bit of a lesser version of the Breeders' Cup turf this year, but nonetheless very impressive as Red Rocks is able to hold off a former winner of this race and better talk now by a half length to get the victory. The second on the day for Frankie DeTore. English Channel, who chased the pace in the early going, was a little bit rank early, as is his often, often his running style, but uh, he did run well to finish third from post position 10. The winner, Red Rocks, is a three-year-old dark bay or brown colt, a son of Galileo from Pharmacist by Machiavellian. Bred by Bally Lynch Stud in Ireland, he is owned by John Paul Redham and trained by Brian Meehan, ridden to victory by Frankie DeTore. Red Rocks runs the mile and a half on the Churchill Turf in 227 and 1. Next up, the Breeders' Cup Classic, powered by Dodge. $5 million a mile and a quarter on the main track. Let's head back to Churchill Downs and the Breeders' Cup Classic. There's the roar from the Churchill Downs crowd as the Breeders' Cup Classic fields set on their way and Lawyer Ron in the white in the middle immediately sprints to the lead. Lava Man is right there. Bernardini came away beautiful and Brother Derek's taken a strong hold down at the rail. Alongside of him comes Premium Tap. There couldn't be much more speed on early here. On the outside, here's Flower Alley keeping them on as Bernardini's tether down in the sixth spot now, being followed by George Washington of the rail, six off the leaders. Inversur is racing alongside a Suave. They're a good eight lengths off the lead now. Then back to Sun King. Along the inside of those two, we have David Junior scraping the paint. Then back to Perfect Drift, and Giacomo is the trailer. Giacomo, 15 off the leader. On to the back stretch they go, and Brother Derek virtually sprinting out here. He's setting up fast pace, a length and a half to Lawyer Ron. Lava Man is in third. Down at the rail, premium tap in the gold colors. Bernardini is back in fifth now, and Bernardini might be being asked to pick it up from here. Bernardini is six lengths off the leader. going to have to go wide now. George Washington is coming through inside of him. Then David Jr. Inversor tries to get up closer. He's seven off the leaders. Then Suave, Sun King behind that perfect drift, and Giacomo continues to trail. Less than a half mile to go. Brother Derek is the leader. There's Lawyer Ron chasing him in second. Now Bernardini has suddenly kicked it in. It looked like he might be battling, but Bernardini with a magnificent rush on the outside in the white sleeves. And Bernardini strikes the front in the classic. Brother Derek running a huge one to his inside. In behind those two now, Inversaur's coming home gamely as well down the center. Bernardini, Inversaur's coming with a good run down the center of the track. Brother Derek tries to battle back along the inside, but Inversor, Bernardini, Inversor, Inversor and Bernardini in a thriller, but Inversor's got his measure. And Inversor, the Argentinian bred, Uruguayan raced, Inversor has won the classic. Second was Bernardini, premium tap running on third. Giacomo came from dead last to finish fourth, just ahead of Brother Derek. 
Invasor. This guy has done absolutely nothing wrong. And for some reason, that doesn't even seem to have a big fan club. He is just kind of an overlooked horse. He does nothing but win races. He's four for four, all exclusively in grade one company here in the United States. He was an Uruguayan Triple Crown winner. Came to the United States over the winter time, was stabled in Florida for a short period of time, shipped from Florida to Dubai, ran fourth in the UAE Derby in his only career loss, and then has gone from strength to strength this season, winning the Breeders' Cup Classic by a length as the six and a half to one set third choice in the wagering behind Bernardini and Lava Man. He gets the victory at the expense of Bernardini. Premium Tap, who I liked quite a bit in this race, went off at almost 28 to one. And I still believe if he had snuck through on the rail, Edgar Prado would have had a little bit better shot than taking him back and outside of horses. But it did appear to me that Premium Tap really wanted to get off of the rail after having had a little bit of trouble last time out while down inside of horses. The winner, however, very impressive. Invasor is a four-year-old bay son of candy stripes from Quenda by Interpret, bred by the Aris Clausan in Argentina. He is owned by Shadwell Stable and trained by Karen McLaughlin, ridden to victory by regular rider Fernando Hara. This 18-year-old uh, rider who won, uh, won, of course, the Belmont Stakes on Jazil for the same connections earlier this year seems to have ice water in his veins in these major races. He is an outstandingly poised young rider. Invasor covers the mile and a quarter on the Churchill main track in 202 flat. We have one further stakes race to bring to you from Churchill Downs. That's the grade three Cardinal on the turf for Phillies and Mares on Sunday. Let's head back to Churchill for one more race and the Cardinal. They're in the gate. They're off and running in the Cardinal. Ash of Humor springing out for the early lead. Stormina flashing speed will join here with Royal Copenhagen down along the hedge now. And there goes Sabalina charging on the outside. Silk is sister flashing good speed as well with the great beautiful bets in Carolina Sky. Coming past the Twin Spires for the first time. Silka's sister and Robbie Alvarado in hand, letting it clear by a length over Carolina Sky. Second beautiful bets is tracking along the inside of the Rahold in third. Sabalina racing forwardly in fourth early. Stormina's racing in fifth. More than promised, Footstilly's racing sixth. Rich in Spirit moves three wide from seventh now. Amarama up the inside. Next by a couple to Royal Copenhagen. There's a length and a half in front of Dash of Humor. And Black Java's at the back of the pack. On to the back side they wheel. The opening quarter mile, 24 and three-fifths seconds. It's Carolina Sky and Larry Melanson poking their nose in front of Silka's sister and Alvarado along the edge in second. And Sabalina inching up under a tug in third. Beautiful bets racing fourth. Stormina inching along the inside from fifth. Rich in spirit gaining on the far side as they start to pack up here into the far turn. And more than promised, Amarama's down along the inside. Royal Copenhagen up into striking range. Seven back to Dash of Humor. And Black Java at the back. Six for longs, 113 and three. On around the far turn they go. Still Carolina Sky from Silka's sister. And Sabalina now cut loose by by Julian La Peru and Sabalina accelerates right on by the front runners to take charge off the turn. Sabalina opening up by a lick now. Silka's sister battling gamely along the inside. More than promise kicks it into high gear. From the back comes Rich in Spirit, final 16th. It's Sabalina short lead from a stubborn Silka sister. Sabalina, Silka's sister coming back on. Going to be close. Sabalina, Silka's sister. Whoa. Too tight to call on the line. Royal Copenhagen ran third. That and rich in spirit in a cardinal handicap. Sabalina, a nice New York bred, familiar to a lot of our viewers. Sabalina heads down there and gets the victory by a game nose over the beautifully bred Silka's sister with Royal Copenhagen back in the third spot with an off the pace bid. The connections of uh, Sabalina had been trying to get her graded stakes credentials for the longest time. Early this season down in uh, Kentucky, she had been beaten only by about a length and a half by Gorella, but that race was an allowance race, so there was no real credentials there despite the quality of the field. Nonetheless, Sabalina send, goes back down to Kentucky after a very busy summer and fall in New York and picks up those elusive stakes, graded stakes credentials at nine and a half to one. Sabalina is a dark bay or brown mare, a daughter of Langfuhrer from Restored Hope by He's Bad, bred in New York by John Valentino and owned by Jay Lieberman. Listed as trained uh, in Kentucky by Chuck Simon, who took over the training duties as uh, Joe Aquilino has handles the mare in New York. Chuck Simon, the listed trainer 
in Kentucky. Ridden to victory by Julian Leperu, who couldn't quite get uh, either Gorella or Asi Siempre home the day before, but finds a way to win with Sabalina on Sunday's card. Sabalina covers the mile in an eighth on the Churchill Turf in one minute 49 and four. That'll wrap up a very busy edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you very much for joining us this week. We hope you'll be able to join us again next time as we take a look at stakes racing action from around the country. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.